All right, I'm Dan Lindstedt, and we're here to set up Analytics Mapping Manager. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. But before we do any of that, we have to make sure that our SQL Server is actually configured properly. So we need to go into SQL Server Configuration Manager and run that. And we need to make sure that our client protocols are enabled. A lot of times you'll see that TCP IP is shut off or not enabled. You want to turn on 1433 port enabled for local host. That's very, very important. Um, so if you go to the network configuration, you want to look at the protocols as well. And usually TCP IP is disabled. When you double click this, you want to make sure that all the general is turned on and enabled and to keep, it, keep alive is all on. IP addresses, here's where the kicker comes in because you can see um, that your IP address with your local hardware card, that's your loopback, um, is, is usually disabled. You want to turn that on. Uh, enabled, enabled, enabled. If you want 1433 and local host to work, you need to turn all of these on. See, here's your local host address. Here's your loopback address, 127. Um, so this is where the product through JDBC and local host actually connects to your SQL Server. If you don't turn these on, you're going to have problems getting connected to your SQL Server environment from Analytics DS Mapping Manager. Okay, so we're here. We're going to uh, run the installation and we're going to open up the installation directory or um, a document and we're going to follow the installation documentation. So the way to do this, or the right way to do this, is to take a look at all this. Now I'm going to bypass all that because I've done it before. But we're going to skip right down to the first instruction. We're going to install Java. Okay, so we're going to find the double click the GRE folder and install the Java executable. So here's what we're going to do. And you want to run their version of Java that's included uh, because they're certified to run that version of Java 7 for Windows. You do not want Java 8 for this at this time. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and run that uh, component and I'll be back with you as soon as it installs. All right, we're back successfully installed. So now we're going to go to the next component, installing Tomcat. So you want to go ahead into the Tomcat Apache Tomcat folder and install Tomcat. So we're going to go back to Analytics Mapping Manager. We're going to go into Tomcat and deploy Tomcat. So we're going to run that just as it says. All right, so let's go ahead and install that and I'll be back with you when it's done. We don't need anything else here, host manager. Um, and JSP examples, unless you're going to do some fancy things with Tomcat, you really don't need all of that fancy stuff. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just simply do that with the Tomcat server, straight as required. And uh, we're going to set all the defaults. Now, this is the default configuration. They don't ask for anything special. If you look at the documentation, um, you can see port 8080. Uh, that's really all they're interested in. Uh, and uh, obviously, if you change it, then you, it's it's all on you, right? Um, so we're just going to leave it. Tomcat 7 is a web service, and the administrator login we don't need. So if you really want to, according to this, you can set it to admin admin. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And there it found the JRE folder. So we're good to go and install Apache Tomcat. And we should be good to go. So it says we should see a Tomcat down here. And there it is, Apache Tomcat. We've got it in the icon. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is modify the memory settings. So in order to do that, it says here, go to Tomcat Java, Java Options window. So you want to probably go to Configure. Now I'm right-clicked on that to bring that up. And this is where you find the Java and the Options window. Okay, so here are all the options for Java. So this is what... what uh, they're discussing. Now, I've had trouble in the past. Um, I do run 64-bit. I have trouble uh, using these. So we're going to go ahead and use the 32-bit options. You should be able to copy them right out of there. Now, you don't want to destroy any of the options that are already there. You want to add those to the bottom. In fact, you can control it this way as well. So this is basically 512 megs for the stack size. And then the memory size, you want to make sure it's uh, set properly, which is uh, 1024 meg. So that's the, the memory pool um, and everything else. So the thread stack size and the permanent size. So we're just going to go ahead and apply it. Those will override on the command line anyway. Okay. And that should take care of it. But in order to do this, oh, ensure that the initial memory pool and max pool 
values are empty. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead back to Tomcat and fix that up. So we're going to empty those out. And now what we want to do is actually start and stop the service. So when you stop the service because it won't absorb the settings until you restart the service. So we'll go ahead and restart the service. Click OK. And now we're good to go. OK, so everything is there. The next thing we're going to do is deploy the Apache War. Um, we actually need to create the MM Analytics database. So let's do that. So we're going to go into SQL Server, Enterprise Manager. You can use whatever database you want. I'm using SQL Server for all of this just because it's easy. Now, you'll notice this is SQL Server Express, so it's the free version. Now, remember, local host will not work on 1433 unless you fix all of those protocols. So we're going to go ahead and create new database. And we're going to call it MM Analytics just like they want. And I think they give us an initial size. If they don't, it should probably be... 30 megs, I would say, or 50 megs, I would say. So we're going to go ahead and just set it to, to 50 megs. Get that window back there. We're going to set the initial size to 50 megs. If you don't have 50 megs, set it smaller. I like to make my logs initially 10 megs, and I also don't like to grow them by 10%. I prefer to grow the logs uh, a little bit smaller than that. I like to grow them in megs. And I like to grow them by five megs a shot because the larger they get, the bigger, the faster they grow. That's just the nature of the percentage. Um, I like to have a simple recovery model. So we'll leave that there. Everything else is good. And away we go. So that creates the database. Boom, it's done. I'm running SSD here, folks. Uh, the other thing we're going to need is security. We're going to need a login. I've already created a login. So I'm going to actually delete it just to show you. We're going to go ahead and recreate the, the, the login. I'm going to call it AMM user. Um, and um, oh, by the way, I'm running this server in mixed mode. So if you look at the properties of the server, you can see database uh, connections and actually connections, uh, remote connections. Um, yeah, that's not necessary. Uh, in general, one of these security, ah, SQL Server and Windows authentication. So that I'm running in mixed mode, so I don't need all that fancy stuff. But we're going to go ahead and create a login called AMM user, uh, SQL Server auth. And I make the password the same. Now, keep in mind, I'm running on a closed environment. So um, it's all lowercase, uh, AMM user. So that's really no big deal. Shut, shut off all the password policies. We're going to map this to MM Analytics, and we're going to give them a server role of, in this case, DB admin or sysadmin. We're going to let them in. And then user mapping, map to MM Analytics, make them DB owner. Uh, we'll map them to read only as well in Sequila Data Vault, so just for fun. Um, and that should be enough. So now we have a DBO user, AMM user right there and they're allowed into AMM analytics. Now the next thing that they want us to do is open up the files for SQL Server and run the table creations. So we're going to go ahead and go new query. This is the way I like to do it anyhow. Close the properties and then we're going to go in and actually get the SQL for SQL Server and we're going to actually just drag this right over here into this window should take it. No, I guess it's not going to take it. Okay, so we're going to open that up. Opens it right up. Now you'll notice it's uh, connected and it should be, yes, yeah, see, I'm going to have to copy that over because it wasn't in the right database. It was not in MM Analytics. That other one was in a different database. So this should be good. Um, and if you go all the way to the top, there should be a use command at the top, but apparently there's not. So we're going to go ahead and just run it. All right, we're back, executed successfully, everything's good. All of our tables are there, as you can see. Boom, 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 ADS catalogs, everything's filled, everything's loaded. And now we can close that down. Okay, so what is the next step in the installation? Everything's good. DB owner, data reader, data writer, everything's awesome. Uh, we got the new login, we created AMM uh, in the mapping manager, so everything's good. We adjusted the schema models. Two to three minutes. Yeah, that was pretty fast on the SSD here because I got a fast machine. Now we want to take the mapping war and deploy it into the Apache uh, area. 
So we're going to go into the war file and we're going to control C copy or right click copy. And we're going to drop that in here into ZAMP. No, 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 no. That would be program files, Apache software, Tomcat. And they want us to drop it in, in, the, in the mapping manager folder. So web apps, where do they want us to drop it? Web apps folder and drop it there. So there we go. So we're going to continue. And it's going to move 220 megs from one place to another. Then we wait. Apache does its thing. And Apache should go ahead and create the application and all of the subfolders. All right, so now we need to go into Mapping Manager WebInf database folder and configure the database properties. Whoops, went a little too far. WebInf database, database properties. Now, I prefer TextPad. You can use whatever you want, but I'm going to use TextPad for this. Ultra Edit will work just fine or whatever you got. Now, server name and IP address. I prefer to just have a local host because I'm running locally. Obviously, if you're connecting somewhere else, this is where localhost 1433 really comes into play. All right. AMM. Uh, what do we call it? MM Analytics. I believe is what we call it. Let's take a look at SQL Server. Make sure we got it right. Now, again, this is SQL Server 2014 Express Edition. So, MM Analytics, definitely have it right. So, we're going to make sure that that's all set up. The UID is AMM user, and the password is the same, all lowercase. I believe I did not put a underscore in the password, but we're going to double check. We're going to make sure. Oh, AMM user. So, no log. Um, no underscore in the username either, so that's all right. So AMM user and take the underscore out, and it should be good. We not I'm not using Oracle or HSQL DB or anything else, so we're going to go ahead and, and leave that. I don't have any LDAP properties, but we're going to leave this alone for now. Okay, I actually don't have an LDAP property, so I'm going to shut those off. And we're going to turn off the LDAP properties. I am not running LDAP. Oh, yeah, that's right. It won't let me save them. Uh, so I need to save as. That's one of the problems here. Um, so we're going to call this text one. Foundation. It won't let me do this to that location. So we're going to actually save it to the desktop for now. Desktop. And what we'll do is we have to go in here and actually go into security. And this is where you need enough security to take over or take uh, control of this component. So we're going to edit. And we're gonna give full control to um, the users, apply. And that opens up the security of this particular piece. Now we should be able to take um, the file that I saved to the desktop wherever it is, let's go find it. Now we're going to save it as, and we're gonna put it in, back in where it belongs, because I took control of the folder. So we know Apache, Tomcat, Web Apps, Mapping Manager, and WebInf database, okay? All right, so we're gonna save that over. Boom, now we have write access. Okay, so that's good. So now that's done. So now what we wanna do with the um, document is we wanna stop the Apache Tomcat server and restart it. So we're gonna go into Apache, stop service. 
We're going to go into Apache and we're going to start the service. If the service starts up too quickly or not or not quickly enough, it takes way too long, then you've got an issue with the login. Something's going on with the errors. So we can go ahead and check the logs. That's very important. If you want to look at Apache, you actually want to go into the Apache folder for logs, uh, which is backup one directory here. And you want to go into, instead of web apps, you want to go Apache Software Foundation Tomcat logs. That's where everything is. See the date modified. You're going to look at the sizes. Okay. So you can see here is a Catalina log. All right. And the Catalina log should tell us that it couldn't see it couldn't log in uh, and the time is 607 that was earlier when we started it at first but we'll go to the bottom and we want to see what's going on and it looks like Catalina started up just fine as of 610 and that was after our edits to the database so it looks like everything worked mapping manager set up and, and is running so now we should be able to get into it if we go to localhost and mapping manager there we go if it weren't started you wouldn't even get to this screen uh, in the next video we'll pick up the license and set the license in and um, we'll show you how to use analytics ds all right thank you very much